hello everyone. Um, I'm Operations Director um, for Digital at Endemol Shine UK. And my team works with our production companies on um, integrating digital, integrated digital formats. And that usually results in apps or websites or content teams. And for those of you who are puzzling, a bit puzzled about um, the name, we are the recently merged Endemol Shine group. And um, we're a global content creator. Um, we have offices in about 30 countries, well, over 30 countries. And we produce about 600 hours of um, revenue generating television a year. Um, and we have a major digital and gaming um, network as well globally. In the UK, you'll know us for um, shows like Big Brother, Deal or No Deal, um, Million Pound Drop. Broad, um, broad Church, 8 out of 10 cats. So there's a, 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 a huge array of different formats and genres that we cover. So um, today I'm going to focus in on, on game shows, which is where we've had the most success in terms of um, second screening and interactivity. I'm just going to look at a little bit more about what, what are people doing when they're watching TV and how significant are these distractions that people talk about. And does it really matter? And then I'm going to look at Endemol Shine's kind of evolution in game shows, because I think um, that offers some clues about what we can do. We kind of feel that we've only just um, touched, it's just the tip of the iceberg, really. And um, then I'm going to leave you guys with some, a few principles that we use in terms of our content um, approach. So um, what are the audience up to? Well. People have always done things whilst they've been watching TV, um, be it ironing, eating, chatting, reading magazines. But now we know that they're tweeting, Facebooking, using apps, um, browsing. Um, but you know, how significant is that? Well, there's been quite a lot of research done in the last few years about this. In the UK, Ofcom did some research and found that 53% of us um, were using simultaneous media whilst we were watching TV. And a similar story in the US, a more recent study by Millwood Brown for Facebook found that 78% of US um, internet users were um, second screening, doing something else whilst they were watching um, TV. Um, but the big question is, 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 does this matter? And can we, can we do something about it? Can we take advantage of it? Now, we believe that we can harness this behavior and have done. Um, and the, there is some positive research as well that um, kind of indicates some of the stuff that we can be doing. So Kantar Media um, actually presented some research last year where they proved what we'd suspected for a long time, that Twitter usage does um, drive viewership of TV programs. And in 11% of programs, um, there was an estimated 2% uplift in viewing figures. So that's a significant um, step, and it was good to see that proved. And then Discovery um, Communications, uh, they, they surveyed their audience and found that a quarter of the activity whilst watching TV was, um, in fact, uh, linked to TV. So coming back, does this matter? Well, we think it matters a great deal because, in fact, um, we think that it presents a huge opportunity for producers to innovate and, and to harness this activity. So in terms of sort of taking advantage of this opportunity, um, we think it comes down to creating experiences on the second screens, following where the audience has gone to. And um, also, because of social media is a big part, so that's a big part of what people are doing when they're watching TV. And we want to sort of spark conversations, join in those conversations, taking part and, and kind of crafting their experience online and directing them, directing them back to the show and into what we are um, trying to achieve. We also think that mobile is a big part of this. People are now sitting with really powerful computers next to themselves, next to them on the, on, on the, on the sofa. So it's trying to capitalize on that. So in terms of, our, um, in terms of what we've been up to in game shows, I think this demonstrates this, this approach um, in action. 
And five years ago, we um, launched the Million Pound Drop in the UK. This is a live, for those of you who don't know, this is a live quiz show. We took very much a live event approach to presenting it. And a part of that was having a play along game. So this enabled us to bring the audience into the show. Um, and so by doing shout outs from the host and putting people's statistics on screen, we really felt people who did play along felt like a big part of the show. This also meant that we um, attract, were able to attract a younger age group. Um, and it was bringing it back to kind of creating a, a point to view. And the digital part really helped with that. We also innovated um, in terms of casting. So this is something we'd not been able to do before. But with online casting technology and integrating digital into the show, it meant that we could drive people online to apply. And they could appear in the, in the next episode. So we set new benchmarks in terms of play along with that show. Um, we peaked at about 12% of the audience playing along. And um, we peaked at 189,000 players playing along with the show. Interestingly, now we have 80% are playing along on mobile devices. We've had 3 million app installs. And we're regularly trending on Twitter when the show's back on air. The next big digital format we did in the UK was the bank job, which was another quiz show. We um, took the, the final part of the show, the head-to-head -head part of the format, and we created an online game. And we used this online game for casting. And the only way to get on the show was to play the online game. You had to win three games against someone else. And this was launched about six weeks out from the, big, from the show launching. So this was part of a marketing campaign. But also, as a producer, and any producers in the, in the room will understand this, it's, it's quite a, a bold thing to do and a risky thing. Because if your technology doesn't work or people don't apply, you don't have anyone in your show. Um, but the, um, I think when it, we managed to build a really strong community of super fans. We had 325,000 um, registered users. We um, had 10 million gameplays and a staggering 73 years of gameplay. Um, and this was around um, a show that was on for a week with a six week lead up. So, sort of the amount of attention that we grabbed with this type of um, creative experience was significant. And we also sort of took, a step, took it a step further. And we drove people during the live shows, we drove people online to play the head-to-head -head game in order to get on the show the next week, so the next day. And um, we also did um, innovated around ad breaks. So during the ad breaks, we would um, wrap um, statistics about who had just qualified, how people were doing. And we found that that actually kept people with the ads and with the show. Now, all of the experience that we've built and the kind of um, experiences that we've created for consumers have led us to our latest format, which is the Singer Takes It All. Um, and this really has supersized all the different elements that I've been talking about. And um, the best way, I think, to show that is if, we, if um, I've got a video to show you. So if we could roll the VT, that'd be great. The Singer Takes It All is a game show unlike any other. Using a number of major innovations, the mobile app puts viewers in control like never before. You lot at home control everything that happens from the comfort of your sofa. Launched weeks ahead of the series, the app gave the public power to audition for the show and cast all the contestants. Using karaoke-style functionality, viewers could choose from hundreds of songs and sing their video audition into their mobile. Once uploaded, their performance is added to all the other hopefuls who have sung an audition. Singers of Britain, we salute you! In the hopeful section of the app, users judge auditions, choosing whether each is a hit or miss. Vote, and another performance slides in and automatically plays. All these votes powered our weekly chart. Hopefuls with the most hits would rise to the top, and push notifications kept hopefuls informed of their ascent. Don't just put them through because you want to have sex with them. Proper. <laughs> Every vote you make is logged in your history. 
so you can revisit performances you've judged and watch again and share them. Hopefuls can share their performance to campaign for their Facebook and Twitter followers to vote for them. At the end of the chart week, the hopefuls at the top of the charts are invited onto the show. No further selection process or producer meddling. If our hundreds of thousands of users deem a performer worthy, they make it straight onto the program. Here's how it works. The Singer Takes It All is a singing game show with a winner every episode. There's no panel of judges. Once again, the viewers decide a winner via the app, but now it's live. Get your apps out. Each singer performs on a moving track. Viewers have four choices to vote in each 90-second performance. It's free and as simple as tapping hit or miss. If most viewers like what they hear, the singer moves forward. If they don't like what they hear, they move backwards. And if the viewers really don't like what they hear, the singer will be making a swift exit out the back door. Every 10 seconds, the votes are recalculated in real time, and the track direction and speed may change. Viewers vote, then see the payoff seconds later. Now that's control. The aim for each singer is to reach the gold zone at the front of the track and stay there for as long as possible. But with viewers voting throughout each performance, one bum note could cause viewers to send a contestant backwards. The contestant who stays in the gold zone the longest is the winner. Vote data from the app controls everything. The direction and speed of the track, the scores that are displayed on the TV screen, even the studio lighting was automated from the incoming app data. If you're not playing along at home, then seriously, you want to have a word for yourself. The singer takes it all, puts the excitement back into live voting, giving viewers real power over a TV show. 7.3 million live votes were cast across the four episodes and 9.5 thousand editions were uploaded by hopefuls applying for the show. A staggering 23 million votes were cast on hopefuls. This addictive, playful mechanic resulted in users voting on an average of 52 videos. You might want to consider a wardrobe malfunction to win them back. The show broke a second screen record, with more than 15% of the audience voting along live. The singer takes it all, hands control to the audience like never before. Choose who gets on TV. Record your own performance to Compete for a place in the show and take part in our revolutionary live voting to determine the winner. You've got to love Alan Carr for that and our um, winner, Steve, of the first, um, first series. Um, but th this was our most integrated show to date. Um, everything was in the hands of the audience and everything revolved around the app. There was no other way to vote in the show. Um, People could apply to be on the show, as you saw in the video. Um, it kind of taps into that immediacy of seeing something, think I can do better, and then they would be on the show if they were good enough the next week. Um, it allowed people to, in terms of the judging, you know, there's something that really stood out about this format over other t talent shows and voting, is that there was an immediate feedback loop. So you're, you're voting and you see that Travelator move and you see the audience's opinion right there. And there were no judges, it was just the audience. And um, it, it also, we also kind of took that step that meant that the physical, an 80, that was an 18 meter track there in the studio, and that was being controlled by the data coming in through the app, and um, all the studio lighting and the, and the effects, like um, the CO2, were all driven by the data from the app. So, this, I think, kind of represents, certainly for Endemol, Shine, um, the pinnacle of where, we've, of where we've got to in terms of, and really demonstrates how you can grab the audience's attention, because during the show, there were 7.2 million votes over four episodes. But it also meant that in the run-up to the show, we captured people's attention. So we had 100,000 installs of the app before the show air, went to air. And um, then between episodes, where people were casting um, the singers to go on to the next show. Um, as you saw in the VT there, but it's worth reiterating, 52 videos were watched per person um, in the app, and that amounted to 23 million votes cast, and this was all over a six-week period. So I thought I'd leave you with some of the principles that we um, use in terms of creating our interactive experiences. And... Um, kind of picked out five to talk about. So the first one is harnessing natural behavior. 
And this is about activating the living room and tapping into what's already happening there. So we've all done it. We've all seen it happening, people shouting the answers at the quiz show at the telly. Now with the million pound drop, there's a way of proving that you know those answers, proving that you've beaten the contestants, proving that you've beaten your mates, and sharing that on Facebook and Twitter. Um, but the singer takes it all. You can vote immediately. You can get those singers straight off the show, or you can put them into the gold zone as the winner. And you see instant feedback on that. Or if you want to take part, you think you can be better, a better contestant in the show, be it singing or quizzing, you can apply and you can be on the very next show. And then the second one is, is satisfying the demand for immediacy. So we, we live in a world where everyone wants everything now. And harnessing this new behavior and the new technologies we have, we can allow people to play a wrong right now. We can allow people to vote and see that reaction on at the impact in the show. And we can allow people to sing, be voted on, and appear in the next show. The third one is um, rewarding participation. So we find it most effective when we bring the players at home back into the show. And that's through hosts doing shout outs to individual players or on screen graphics saying how people are doing. So boys are beating girls, come on the girls, you need to be better. Um, or controlling the singer on a big track. And it's all about acknowledging their participation in the show. And then remembering that TV is social. It's always been social, but now um, this is talked about with strangers as well as friends and family on social media. And so we put a lot of effort around our shows in terms of sparking conversations, joining in conversations. We use it for marketing. We use it for marketing um, our apps to apply, commercial enterprises, brand partnerships. And we also use it in a kind of customer service way. So if we have an issue with one of our apps or, an, or, or a website, the first way we f hear about that is through, um, f through social media. And then we also use it in a customer service way in terms of helping people either with applications or using a particular technology that we've, we've launched. And then the final thought is really just not forgetting that you've got to make great, great TV for everyone. Um, we're really proud of what we did with The Singer Takes It All. We hit a new benchmark in terms of engaging the percentage of the audience, so 15% participated on Singer. Um, but we never forget that 85% aren't participating in that way, and they're watching TV. So it's about, still about great television. And we come across a lot of shows in development where you find a fantastic bit of interactivity, and it's great fun to do, but then it's absolutely rubbish to watch. So um, we look forward, really, to, 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 to seeing ourselves and other producers um, grabbing more attention and increasing that 15%. And um, yeah, we look forward to some, some other great um, digital interactive experiences. So thank you very much. Um, thanks for supporting the backmarkers in this TV Connect marathon, especially as it's lunch is just around the corner. Um, I'm happy to take questions, or um, you can grab me afterwards or around lunch. Thanks very much, Nick. Anyone got any questions? Um, we are being pushed for time a bit, I'm afraid, Nick. So, uh, uh, but it seems it's only a matter of time before Endemol becomes less reliant on the, on the, on the free-to-air broadcasters, let's put it that way, than yeah. it has been, uh, and maybe moving more and more online. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And that, yeah, it's all good for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, please join me in thanking Nick, though. Thank you very much. Thank you.